Hey, hey, and g'day. Welcome or welcome back from wherever and whenever you're listening in. My name's Darren, and this is my guest list pod, the show where the guests on my list get to have some fun with their favorite list countdowns, and we get to know them and their work a little better. Now, if you are returning to the show, then hopefully there is something about the show that you liked. Otherwise, really, why did you come back? However, if you haven't stumbled in on the wrong podcast, and you're not here by mistake, please subscribe and leave me a five-star review wherever convenient. I would be forever grateful. Or maybe better yet, tell some people about the show that you think might like it. That works as well. You can contact the show at my guest list pod pretty much everywhere you look, including a new podcast website that I just put up over at podpage.com. I don't have an affiliate link or sponsorship with these guys, but decided to take the advice of Tanner Campbell from Good Morning Podcasters, who had been suggesting this on a few episodes of his show. It was very easy to do, and I think the end result was pretty good, so check it out if you can. And on to today's show. Back in January, I was fortunate enough to chat with 50% of the hosting complement of an indie music review show hailing from Ontario, Canada. John Hurst of the Hurst Brothers podcast was a pleasure to speak with and was polite and invested in all parts of our discussion. We chatted about his podcast and his music journey, counted down a cool top 10 and found out some things about him and his family that you definitely wouldn't get by just listening to their show. It was a fun episode and one I really enjoyed making. So sit back, relax and enjoy some Hearst Brothers vibe. Hearst, Hearst Brothers, Hearst Brothers. I'm gonna say Hearst Juicy Hearst Music Brothers. coming Hearst your way. Brothers. I'm this new music in your DM daily. Give me them Hearst Brothers. <laughs> new music review. So today I am very happy to be able to chat with one half of a very talented brother duo. John and Mark Hearst hail from Ontario, Canada and are musicians, YouTubers and most importantly for me, podcasters. They produce an indie music show where each week bands risk it for the biscuit and face the boys' breakdown of their music musical offerings. So let's not muck about. John, welcome to my personal guest list and welcome onto my guest list pod. Thank you so much, Darren. It is a pleasure to be here. I love being on other people's podcasts because it is less work for me. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Well, I'm sure the uh, the preparation, the editing, all that sort of stuff is uh, minimized or minimized. Sorry, uh, when you you're a 100%. guest, uh, yeah. Uh, look, I've I've been a guest uh, twice, I think once. I can't remember now. Uh, and yeah, it was a lot easier and a lot freer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's more fun. It's Definitely. A, yeah. Definitely. Different dynamic, which is which is great. So, look, yeah. why don't we start with your elevator pitch on who you are? And uh, look, we're not getting the full Hearst goodness today in terms of uh, your brother Mark. He's not with us. He's uh, quite busy at the moment. But why don't you give yeah. us a rundown in terms of what you guys are up to? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. So, yeah, unfortunately, Mark can't make it. He's uh, started a new job and he's super busy, kind of hard to track down. But um, my name's John. So, I'm the other half of the Hearst brothers. And basically, yeah, you nailed it in the intro. We are musicians ourselves. We started making music. I mean, we've been playing live music and covers and stuff for ages, but we started um, making our own music uh, almost two years ago. Huge learning curve. Like, it's incredible. Dove headfirst into that. Um, mixing, mastering, producing the whole works. Started to finally get to a place where we're semi-proud of what we're making. So we're happy about that. And the first few songs that we put out just nobody listened to and I knew they weren't great but it was like how do you get people to give you some feedback on what you're doing wrong like how do you get opinions on your music and so that kind of birthed the idea of our podcast where we like you said and I love it we have artists come in and risk it for the biscuit and they will basically send us their songs we'll feature it on our show and we'll rate them and and have some banter and some chats back and forth and we thought it was great for those bands because they get you know some free feedback as well as a little bit of exposure and it's a whole lot of fun for us. So it's we've been doing that for a little over a year, I think. We started our first podcast episode November 2020. Does that make sense? 
2020. Right. Yeah. 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 We're about a year and a bit. So, um, yeah, it's been a ton of fun. And then now we're, yeah, we do YouTube videos sometimes here and there from podcast clips. We run a concert series. We do all sorts of stuff, uh, together with, uh, with the brothers, but it's just me today, but okay. Yeah. We'll make, we'll make the best of it. Yeah. We'll have some fun. So Definitely. you said you started doing music recording a couple of years ago. How long have you and Mark been into music? Like, was it something you, that you, you took on as a, ch- uh, a child or a youth? Or? 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We always, we've, we've always been quite musical. So started, you know, playing piano when you were younger and didn't really like it too, too much, but stuck through it. And then I jumped into guitar and then, you know, it was always casual and just kind of here and there, like an, a, a, something that you do on your own by yourself. Mm-hmm. And then um, when Mark got into university, he met up with a group of friends that started playing shows. And then I started playing shows. And then we all started jamming and doing concerts and small gigs. And then, um, yeah, that was, you know, for, I would say probably for the last like eight, seven, eight years, we've been playing pretty regularly together and more recently started doing shows and recording, which is a whole different beast in itself. Yeah. Do you come from a musical family? No, not at all. Oh. That's the that's the funny part. <laughs> yeah. Our parents are very like uh very creative and very supportive. Like my dad does woodworking on the side. My grandpa was a painter. So there's always been some sort of uh tendency to lean towards the arts and being creative, but oh. no, definitely like but parents are not musical whatsoever. But they do love music and they love listening to us. So they're I would say they're probably our number one fans. Oh well, I'd be disappointed if they weren't, I guess. So, <laughs> and I think you would be even more disappointed. So, yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, that's cool. So, with the the advent of your musical career, that's pretty much what prompted you to get into to podcasting, so that you could get a little bit more awareness, I guess, of other indie bands, but also so that I guess people could also get to to know you a little bit more as well. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So we get to talk about ourselves. We get to. You know, for this this EP that we have coming out in February is our first collection of songs. And we had been talking about it on the podcast for the whole time. So it's uh, it gives us an opportunity to to talk about ourselves a little bit, even though we try not to too, too much. But it, it also just building connections. Like we have met some amazing artists. I've gotten tips and tricks from people. And I went and did a music festival and hosted that with a bunch of bands that have been on our show. So it's just kind of our way of getting into the indie music community not only just local but um kind of worldwide we've we've had yeah. bands all, all across the world so whereabouts in ontario are you i am in a well we say we're from a small town guelph it's about oh, no, guelph. 45 yeah. minutes west of toronto wow that's crazy yeah, yeah okay yeah. Oh, look, i'm a big hockey fan so uh oh yeah yeah so <laughs> there's a hockey team in guelph cool right on you do a music review show. I review podcasts every second week. I do them as a review and recommend show. So there's nothing on yeah. there that I'm I'm actually going to dislike. However, yeah. I'm sure you're sent music that is sometimes on the edge in terms of what you think's good and what you think's bad and things like that. How do you deal with that sort of a situation where you don't want to be nasty, obviously, or you Yeah. No, that's a good question. That's a great question. So first of all, we set the show up specifically um, so that we have a third party that vets the submissions Mm because we do get a lot. Yeah. Um, Like we get, there's, you know, sometimes 10 or 15 songs that come in a day. So we have a friend of ours who will review them and group them together and say, okay, these are three hip hop songs that all sound really similar. And then that's an episode once it's all firmed up. Um, so every song that get that makes it on the show has a certain level of uh, quality. Mm-hmm. Let's say, I'm sure there's been plenty that have either received an email that you know it's it, it's not really fit for the show, or yeah. uh, I, I don't know if he emails them all back. I'm, I'm not actually sure, but there have been songs that we've that we've listened to. Um, and again, with that that setup and that structure, Mark and I haven't heard the song going into the episode. So it's the feedback that we're giving and the reaction is a true first first listen um and there's been songs that we didn't really like but again we're similar like i i i'm not doing the show to bash someone yeah we are we're we're amateurs in a sense and we're just providing some sort of feedback so if it's a song that we didn't really like we'll say 
like we'll pick the things that we did like and we'll say you know i really love this that was really cool the guitar sounded great the vocals were awesome but you know it needs something and i'll try to give some sort of feedback just based on my experience on on mixing and producing music of what maybe i would have done differently or what i think still needs some work i i might not have the answers but i know something's missing or it's it's not quite there and then you know we'll just give it a, a moderate score um because we do rate every song so yeah we said from the beginning like we're not going to come in and go oh that was trash and and three biscuits for you out of ten that's 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 not our style don't make friends like that no you don't in fact i had a a friend who was um had a review show and i won't say what he was reviewing but uh he got a pretty much a cease and desist letter from from a lawyer once so (laughs) Yeah, uh, it can be a bit of a minefield when it comes to that sort of thing. So anyway, how have you found (laughs) podcasting? You guys are very natural and and that's what I like. And obviously that comes probably a little bit more, a little bit easier when you're brothers. Although if you you look at some of my kids, uh, sometimes uh, getting along as brothers is not always the easiest. But (laughs) but you guys have a fantastic dynamic in terms of uh, you share very similar views on things yeah. and uh yeah you're, you're very softly spoken but uh yeah it's great banter was it something that was weird doing it like that with your brother straight away or was it something that just came really natural yeah it it came super natural because like we're so authentic that that is what we're like on a regular basis mm-hmm. and so mark and i have always like we've been super close for for 10 15 years and um, and Mark went away abroad and was doing school. And so him and I would catch up every week or two over Zoom and we would just have these conversations and we would end up showing each other music because we both love music. So he'd check this song out and we'd listen to it. And we'd talk about it and we'd have banter and we'd go back and forth trying to make each other laugh. And then when we decided to do the podcast, it was like, well, we're already kind of doing this anyways. So if we just record it and then we'll edit out anything that's maybe inappropriate or yeah. or shouldn't be in the show then let's just go with that so it was it was super natural to to actually do like the conversation part of it is super natural um some of the episodes that we filmed together it was a little bit awkward at first like filming ourselves yeah um and and just you know we we'd we'd crack up laughing and we all like we have a bunch of drinks when we're doing it so we get silly and then we start laughing and uh, you know, we, someone says something that we're like, oh, we can't keep that. And then it's, yeah, it's, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Like we genuinely enjoy doing the episodes because it's basically, we're just hanging out, listening to new music and kind of watching what we say a little bit. That's great to hear. I always love seeing brothers when they're, you know, they have that, that really close affection yeah. for each other and uh, they get along so well. So that's, that's really good. Now I have to ask you though, you you have someone that vets your music, and I remember in one of the episodes you said his name is Jake. Is that right? J- yeah. So Jake's our youngest brother. Oh, he's just recently, yeah. yeah, he's just taken on the role. Um, before we had a friend of ours, Dougie, that was doing it, and then Dougie <laughs> got too busy, and so we asked Jake to do it, and um, so he's been helping us with that. So far, so good. Um, that's good. Yeah, so that's that's the way to get the the third Hearst brother involved is to let him do some of the background stuff. Yeah. Is it just the three of you? Three boys? Yeah, it's the three of us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's funny. I've got three boys myself. So yeah. Nice. They don't get along as well as you do though. <laughs> well, how old are they? <laughs> no, they are uh, thirteen, fifteen, and twenty. So yeah, those so moments. <laughs> it'll come. It'll come. We we weren't nearly as close when we were in that age range either, but you know, as you get older and you kind of get through school, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll get closer. Oh, they're good boys. Look, I I probably played up a little bit. They they have their moments as all brothers do, I guess. And um, yeah, the little ones, the 13, 15 year old, are only fifteen months apart. So there's there's uh, they're nearly like twins. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> so they were very close growing up as toddlers and things like that. But probably yep. yeah, into those teenage years and all the the hormones going nuts and. Yeah, testosterone kicks in, and there you go. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you moved from music into podcasting. What's the best thing that's come from podcasting so far, apart from the fact that you get to highlight all this uh, really cool music? What's the best thing? Yeah, that's you know what I mean. There's a lot of cool things that have come from this this podcast journey. I think a good piece of it is just like you know, doing a project together is, is big and staying organized and and diverting who can do what and, and taking over it and all of that stuff is great. Um, 
I think personally, it's helped both of us a lot in terms of our ability to just kind of speak naturally. Like when we do shows, that was some that was an area that I always struggled with, not for the like not for any reason of being nervous in front of a crowd or whatever, because we, we're comfortable playing music. But the the talking in between and the engaging with the audience and engaging with strangers was it was just didn't come as naturally. Now that we've done the podcast, we're so used to just feeding off each other and almost like you're almost just speaking um, without even caring that anybody's listening. So it's really helped with that. Like when we have shows now, I feel like we play and then we can just talk in between and there's no worry about, oh, what am I saying the right thing? It's just, I'm just talking like I would on the podcast. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, I guess you're not getting any feedback on the podcast or not immediate feedback. So if you're in, <laughs> you're not getting that from an audience, it's like, well, it's just like a podcast sort of thing. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so weird. Like if you're not doing a podcast, then being on stage and you're trying to engage and talk to an audience, but they can't talk back. Yeah. Like some of them might yell and whatever, but it's like, you're not really paying attention to the response. So you're, you're just talking openly and freely. And that's kind of what you do with podcasting as well. You're just kind of putting it out there. Yeah. Okay. But I want to ask you about also uh, your single, Nah. Yeah. Okay. So I listen to some of your music. I watch some of your concerts and you do a lot of covers of, you know, hits from 60s and things like that. So when you released yeah. your that single, it was very yeah. different to a lot of the other stuff that I'd heard you play. What's your favorite sort of genre uh, in terms of music, or do you don't you just don't have yeah. one? Or super open, like my uh, both of our playlists or like our our iTunes or our Spotify is just goes. It's crazy. We love country music. I love rap. I love old school rap music and hip hop. I love rock. I love your classics. Like. It, I I just am a general lover of music and good music, and so when we play our concerts, we like most of them are cover concerts. Mm -hmm. So we just do the covers, and we love just your your crowd pleasers, like yeah. this the songs that you want everybody singing the words to. Those are the most fun to play because everyone just loves it. Yeah. Um. So you're playing to the crowd for that. But then when it comes to writing our own music, we try to do something a little bit different. Okay. With with these singles yeah or with this ep that's coming out and that single specifically it's it's hard to label that music but it's what we enjoy making and we think sounds cool it was a fun song and the film clip was fun as well so everyone should go out and check the Hearst brothers single nah yeah it was a lot of fun good fun Exactly what you paid for. What else would somebody want fame for? Own cars that you never worked a day for. Live in homes with somebody else's decor. But that's fine if you want it. Look into the sky and feel high if you wanna. That's where dreams are made up. But tell me if a dream ever got you paid up. Or if a limousine ever made you famous. That's why I put in work someday it'll pay off. Waste all your money on photo shoots and fake shit. Blow it all and maybe you'll need a day job. Mm, but what's a trade off? The cost of living life while being fake. Uh, your time and rights belong to a higher paid boss. Me, I'd shoot a smile and I know what I'd say to y'all. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, that's what it's all about. That's and that, it, that that that's genuinely what Mark and I are all about too, right? It's just let's just have some fun with this. We're not um we're not immediately like we're not trying to make a career out of music. Mm -hmm. So we just want to do what we're passionate about and what we enjoy doing, and that's the kind of style that we gravitate towards, Perfect. where it's like funky and fun and and just silly, and then there's some little bit of hip hop influence in there, and it's just that yeah, that's just who we are. Perfect. Speaking of fun, so I get, uh, it's pretty much the, the main part of my show, I guess. Uh, I get everyone to come on and count down a list of 10 things in a, in a topic of your choosing. And your, yep. ch your topic of choice this week was top 10 sporting movies. 
So yeah, uh, I've been waiting for someone to pick this one because there are a lot of good sporting movies out there. Uh, There's a ton, <laughs> a lot of fun ones, uh, including yeah. you know the the nonfiction ones and also the 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 com- comedies and things like that. So I'm a bit interested to to see what we come up with here. So so our topic is top ten sporting movies, and I'll I'll let you start at number ten on your countdown and uh, take it from there. All right, all right. So as you mentioned, so many sporting movies. And and we didn't really dive into it too, too much. But Mark and I were big athletes growing up. We love sports. Sports is a huge part of our family. Played hockey, played football. We're both avid golfers. We're, we surf, we snowboard, we wakeboard, we do everything. So when I saw that option, sporting movies, I was like, oh yeah, I love, I love sporting movies. But narrowing down 10 was was very difficult and so kind of just had to go with it it's not in any like grand order um but number 10 i don't know if you've seen this one it's called the replacements keanu reeves yes a long time keanu ago reeves. yeah, yeah. <laughs> a long time ago very young keanu reeves <laughs> yes yes we loved that movie growing up i think it was just like at the right time where we were teenagers and it was like comedy but also football and had a bit of a story to it and yeah that that that's a great i haven't seen that movie in 15 years but yeah that's a good one well had to make the list that's for sure and and like you said um uh it's 15 years since you saw it and i i can't remember when it came out in terms of its first release but that has to be a god nearly the early 2000 2000 i think it was yeah 2000 it came out so that's 22 years. 22 years ago, my God. That's, uh, but but it is, it is still a cool movie. And just, uh, a lot of people that maybe don't know Keanu Reeves from that early would uh, do well hmm. to go back and have a look at that movie. It's a, it's a fun, it's a fun movie. So uh, yeah. now that was, idea, sorry. I was just going to say he was Shane Falco, <laughs> a, a washed up quarterback with a wicked arm. Yeah, that's the and, one. Young Keanu Reeves. Yeah, you got to watch it. Sorry, I cut you off there. No, I was just going to say, was there ever a lockout where they had to bring in sort of replacements like that for uh, a league in America? Because a major league that, that, would. Yeah, that it. happened in the NFL. I don't know. I, I'm not a stats guy, so I don't know what year it was, but that definitely did happen. And that's what's kind of sparked that movie. And yeah. I believe if there's a real sports fanatic out there, maybe correct me, but I believe that's also happened in major league baseball before Okay, where there was some sort of instance where they had to bring in a bunch of call-ups for some reason. Triple A sort of guys being boosted up, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. And it, it's actually happening now in the NFL and the national football league due to COVID protocol. Okay. So look, like last week, Chicago, or I think it was last week or the week before, the Bears were playing and they had like their fourth string quarterback guy who had never actually played a game because the first three guys had been tested positive for COVID. So they yeah. just keep going down the list and picking out guys that probably never would have gotten an opportunity. Yeah, I think they're expanding taxi squads in uh, the NHL as well. So that uh, just to accommodate that is with because there's a lot of games being postponed at the moment. And yep. they had virtually a two-week break where, you know, no one was really playing too much. So they uh, expanded the the taxi squads and all these guys were getting a chance that probably normally wouldn't. So, yeah. Kind of good for them. It's great. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right. So that's number 10. Uh, let's go on to number nine. Number nine is a uh, nonfiction, is Icarus. So I don't know. Have you seen Icarus, the so- documentary? Everybody that uh, knows me has asked me if I've seen it, and if I haven't, which I haven't, uh, they immediately say, you have to watch it. It's fantastic. So, yeah, it's it's not something I've seen as yet, but very cool. It's good. I love, doc- like, I do love documentaries, but I also love documentaries that kind of naturally twist with a story. So, this is another, like, um, there's a great one, too, that was, I think, Oh, shoot. It was Shark Water, I think it was called, where it started off to be a documentary about sharks and preservation and then ended up being all about the, sh- the, the shark fin industry. And Icarus is pretty similar to that, too. It started off being about biking and being about the effects of doping and then took this twist into the whole scandal of the Olympics. And they end up bringing the Russian guy into America. And he's I believe he's still in America and hiding from Russia. He can never go back. <laughs> but uh, 
it's a fascinating watch. It's a great documentary. Definitely. It, it, that had to make the list for me because I just, I really enjoyed that movie. Yeah, but, but I, I do yeah. I do want to watch that movie that that documentary. It looks fantastic. So, all right, um, you're about to give me a movie that I would assume that an, any Australian would be into, <laughs> or anyone that lives near a coastline. Uh, you guys yep. have a huge coastline, but do you have a lot of places that uh, you can go surfing? Okay, so you can surf on the Great Lakes. Okay. There is it. A- Pretty neat community of Great Lake surfers. Is it good surf? No, definitely okay. not. Um, and but it, it's best in the winter, so it's absolutely freezing. <laughs> um, I've done it once, and and it, it was fun to say you did it, but I, I wouldn't do it actively. Yeah. But we have family on the west coast and out in BC, and specifically in Tofino. And Tofino is kind of like this. Don't, you know, it's been coined the surf capital of Canada. Mm-hmm. So that's like your one area where surfing is really popular and really big and we've been going there for years to visit our our cousins and and surf there and we just kind of fell in love with the sport of surfing so i do love surfing i we only get to do it maybe once twice two three times a year on vacation certainly yeah. surfed in hawaii a couple of years ago it was phenomenal but um mostly just like cold water wetsuits hoods gloves boots yeah yeah okay. it's it's pretty gnarly it was fun Okay, so considering that, your number eight choice is... Chasing Mavericks. Oh, I love Chasing Mavericks. Also because it's... I I believe it's a true story. I don't know. I've always been fascinated with Mavericks. Um, Just being that it it seems like such an intense thing to do. To go... Like, I think they they have to paddle like five or six kilometers out through this cold, choppy water infested with great white sharks and then surf this incredibly powerful wave and somebody i think someone died there I'm i sure. can't remember well, a, famous, a famous surfer died there i can't remember it was jerry garcia but he might still be alive i don't remember but someone died there that was a big deal and so yeah i've seen a bunch of surf movies on mavericks and then chasing mavericks was like just your classic surf movie i loved it yeah big fan it's a, it is a biographical movie of I, I can't remember the guy's name, but yeah, um, it's about someone in particular there. The fact that you do have to go so far offshore to get to where you surf, it's it's nuts. It's crazy. Like you know, we love surfing here in Australia. Right? <laughs> well, yeah, it, you wouldn't catch me paddling out to Mavericks. I wouldn't even make it. I would die. Um, <laughs> a cousin specifically moved to Australia for surfing. And uh, he surfs every day. And I'm like, I would do it, but I would still, I would be scared shitless mm. floating in the water out there. And I'm sure it's gorgeous and it's beautiful, but no, it would freak me out. There's a lot of shocks. <laughs> I know. I know. That would freak me out. It would totally freak me out. Put me on a stand-up paddleboard. Yeah. Because um, at least I can see. And I'm standing up. I'm not dangling in the water. But on a surfboard, I'd, uh, that would freak me out. Well, from the bottom, that's why surfers get attacked generally is because from the bottom, a surfer with his limbs hanging over the surfboard looks like a shadow. And, and for a shark, it's generally like a seal or something. like looks like a bit, bit like a seal. So, for sure. you know, they, they usually take a bite and then realize that you're not that tasty. They actually like the big yeah. fatty seals and things like that. Um, but- the, the bite they take, especially if it's a great white or anything like that, they you don't usually come back from that. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. I don't want to, I don't want any part of that. Yeah. No, thank you. No, I understand. Oh, <laughs> the rest. All right, let's do your number seven and then we'll just take a little break after that. But your number seven is, yeah, number seven, I chose it's called Fighting. Now, I'm not sure. When I was looking at the cover and I was like, I know I've seen this movie, but I think I'm confusing it with other fighting movies. Like there's one Never Back Down Mm too, And I can't remember which, it's been so long since I've seen it. I can't remember which one I was thinking of. So it might be fighting. It might be Never Back Down. But I just thought, you know, I got a lot of of football and surfing movies in here. I was like, I'm going to throw one of those good fighting movies because Mm -hmm. it just takes you through the peaks and valleys of the like, you know what to expect in the movie. The guy's probably going to get beat up. He's probably had a rough time and then he's going to work his way up. And then at the end, he's going to win this fight. And I don't know. I always thought those were kind of like exciting and interesting to think about like 
a fighting career of course would be interesting yeah um i'd never do it but <laughs> like it's cool to think oh maybe i that, that would have been cool if i did makes for a good movie put it that way i think so i think it makes for a good movie and you know what you're gonna get so you just yeah. so, so fighting is channing tatum that's the one you're thinking of i think so yeah okay because never is back it- Down's a different one where it's more sort of MMA, whereas this is, I think, uh, Channing Tatum. uh, It's a long time since I've seen this one as well. I think he was a bare-knuckle boxer, then became a boxer, I think. I'm not sure. It's been a while. I I feel like they all blend into my head, but (laughs) when I saw the cover, I saw Channing Tatum. I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the movie I'm thinking of, but then I think I'm also thinking of scenes from some of the other movies too, but nonetheless. A, a good fighting movie, I think, will will take number seven. So we'll just go with fighting. All right, we'll just go with fighting. Not a problem. All right, fantastic. All right, look, why don't we have uh, take a little break and then we'll come back with some more questions about uh, you and the rest of the Hearst Brothers. Sounds wonderful. Awesome. As a new podcaster, one of the annoying things I have found about trying to collect the reviews you get for your show is that Apple, for example, only show you the reviews you get in the iTunes store of the country that the review is made in. So if someone reviews my show in Canada, I won't even know they've reviewed unless they tell me. And I won't be able to see the review unless I log into that country's iTunes page. And honestly, that sounds like a lot of hard work. However, I recently signed up for a service that aggregates all of your ratings and reviews from a number of sources and displays them for you all in one place. Not only that, but they also offer a link for your podcast that automatically displays only the rating and review platforms compatible with your listener's device. So people don't have to wonder or search for how and where they can rate and review your show. Go check out mypodcastreviews.com. And I'd be grateful if you could please use my affiliate link when you join to let them know who sent you. It's in the show notes. And if you want to rate and review my show, you can go to lovethepodcast.com slash pod. Now back to the countdown. All right, and we're back. So I've got some more questions about your life i guess and the life with your brothers and what other things do you do besides music and podcasting what do you do for fun you said you're big into sport do you still play sport or what are your other hobbies yeah we're we're, so mark and i are big golfers we um we golf all the time like i think the first lockdown summer 2020 lockdown number one um mark and i golfed all pretty much every day oh and so yeah, we grew up golfing. We grew up like our, our parents' house is a couple of minutes away from a golf course that my dad plays at weekly and we would always golfed. And then, yeah, now it's it's like the greatest activity to go do with my brother. And then we have a couple other friends. So it'll, you know, four guys out there for four hours, drinking beers, hitting golf balls. It's uh, it's one of our favorite things to do, I would say. Do you consider yourself a, a, a good golfer? Or? Yeah, I, I mean... Yeah, better better than average. most. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah, we're certainly better than average because we've been playing for so long and we yeah. played tons and tons of courses. And our dads are really good golfers, so mm-hmm. yeah, like we're both uh, less than ten handicaps, which is a, a good like we're breaking eighty, yeah. which is a real good score for for most golfers. We're certainly not like competitive or making a tour or anything like that, but yeah, we we play we try to play good golf. But then you you know you have a couple too many beers or or seltzers and things slip. <laughs> yeah, but then again, I guess that's half the fun. Whenever I've played golf, it's been more yeah. about the camaraderie than actually playing golf. Because usually by about the fifteenth hole, I'm ready to throw a club into a tree somewhere. So <laughs> maybe that's because I'm a bad golfer. But uh, but yeah. it's been a good day because you spend it with friends and. Um, yeah, been to a couple of bachelor parties where golf was involved. Uh, that was interesting. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Uh, uh, golf and alcohol <laughs> don't always mix. So. <laughs> uh, not for everybody. No. They they go hand in hand for the Hearst brothers, though. That's um, <laughs> good. Yeah, that's our thing. Very and, good. Uh, we love we love that. Yeah. So, I, are you hockey fans? We uh, so hmm. hockey fans. I'm. Neither of us are real big fans of of any. We love sports and and constantly sports are on on the TV all the time. Mm-hmm. But I don't follow any teams regularly. I'm like I said I'm not a stats guy. I don't if you ask me like 
you know, what are the players on the Toronto Maple Leafs? I can probably name like three or four of them, but I will watch any game that comes on. Love hockey. We grew up playing hockey. We, you know, grew up playing football. So we watch, we watch professional football all the time. Not so I'm a fan of sport, but not necessarily like a, a true fan of any team. I usually find that from people who have played a lot of sport and especially to any sort of a good level, they're generally not always the biggest fans because they've been too worried about actually and too interested in playing the sport. So I I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. Hockey's great. Like I I still, I still play and, and Mark still plays too. We have a couple adult teams in the winter here. Not much else to do when it's super snowy and and icy. Like we snowboard occasionally. Yep. Again, like no mountains in Ontario. So you're kind of limited in your snowboarding, just like you're surfing. But, um, you know, we'll get out there if we can. And then otherwise, yeah, hockey is, is the only other sport we can really do in the winter. Yeah. So the minor league team there is Guelph Storm. Is it yeah. Like, yes. Thought so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's awesome that you know that. Yeah. <laughs> Guelph Storm. They're great. We've watched some of their games too. Like, uh, both Mark and I went to the University of Guelph here, which is really, really close to the arena. So uh, cool. Guelph Storm games are always great to watch. Yeah. Oh, look, it's, um, I've got friends in London and uh, in uh, Windsor and Strathroy. And uh, so uh, apart from being a Canucks fan, I, I actually do follow some of the other, you know, like the the, the more minor league sort of stuff and your, your Knights and uh, your Spitfires and, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's, it's yeah, good to see where How the up-and-comers you- how do you have friends all over Ontario? Did you spend some time here? No, it's actually all through podcasting. Oh, no way. Yeah, it's been fantastic. And my wife has family in BC. So we have on the West Coast, we have a lot of uh, people who we know there, um, family up and down the coast sort of thing. But right. the rest of the guys that, of, uh, that I talk to on a regular basis now have all been through podcasting. That's so cool. And that's, uh, a- and, and that's why I love. We- sorry, sorry, go. No, I just think that that just blows my mind, right? It's the world that we live in right now with social media and technology where you can have great friends all over the world that you just met through through things like this. That's so cool. Well, it's funny. I say it a couple of times, but uh, I speak to my wife's cousins in Vancouver probably more than I speak to most of the cousins here <laughs> in Australia. So, But then again, we have a lot of things in common, I guess, in terms of uh, the hockey and no, oh, I've I've always I've never been to Canada. Um, my wife has, um, but I've been dying to go. And I mean, hey, as much as I would say, come to Ontario. Ontario is great, but if you're coming to Canada, I, I you definitely want to go to BC. It's just so beautiful, mm. and there's so much, especially like you said, you being into cycling and and mountains. Like you'd be there's there's not a whole ton to do in in Toronto. It's a cool city, but. Vancouver is is definitely where it's at. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll uh, I'll get there one day, and uh, I have promised though if I get there, I'm coming over to uh, visit uh, as many of my friends that uh, I've made that I uh, as I can. So <laughs> put me on the list. That's yeah. I love meeting people. So if you ever do come to Toronto, let us know for sure. Fantastic. Maybe we'll be having a concert around that time. Great, that'd be fantastic. All right, cool. Um, anything else that you guys are into? What are we into? So we're avid cottage goers. It's a big thing in um, in Ontario. So we've uh, our parents have got a cottage. It's about an hour and a half north of of where we live. Um, it's on a beautiful lake, and so we've been going there, our, uh, you know, for the summers for our entire life. And then your typical cottage activities, which now includes drinking and golfing, um, <laughs> and have cool. all of our friends up. But certainly, like like boating and sea doing and like i said wakeboarding water skiing we grew up doing all that stuff and basically anything outdoors there is uh is good fun so we're yeah and in the summers you'll find us at the cottage and oftentimes now the cottage has become our concert venue so we bring all our equipment up and we set up shows and we used to have plenty of friends there on the regular last two summers have been kind of quiet for that because of covid but we're looking forward to getting back into that kind of scene where you know we never even used to say anything and 10 of our friends would just show up and we're like perfect oh but, right yeah impromptu yeah, concert yeah. fantastic exactly <laughs> exactly 
All right, look, let's get back to the countdown. Let's uh, find out what we've got left in terms of uh, your favourite sporting movies. I think we're up to number six. Number six. Yeah, for number six, I have Invincible. So I think this is the... Oh, no, Replacements was football too. But now we're getting into some of the more football movies. Okay. Have you seen Invincible? No, I haven't. Uh, I, I, I had to look this one up and I saw Mark Wahlberg was in it, but I've never seen it. Very another true story, and oh, okay. a very good. Movie. It's like it's your it's your typical kind of call up movie, I think. And there's so many football movies again. It's been a long time since I've seen this, but I believe in Invincible. It's another one of those ones where he's kind of a small guy and he tries out because you can try out for the NFL, unlike some other sports. Like I could just go and try out. I've never even make it past round one, but you can go to these tryouts. And, uh, and he tries out and kind of makes the team as a low level and then works his way up. And it's just a feel-good football movie. But I believe it is also a true story. Okay. So, I'll definitely I have a look at that one. Philadelphia. Philadelphia Eagles. It's a great movie. It's a feel-good one. Okay, good. Oh, that's, that's nice. I'll, I'll, I'll check that one out. On the list. Number five, though. Number five is one of my favorites as well. Um, another surfing movie. Documentary style, though, this time. Riding Giants, probably one of the more famous surfing documentaries, I would think. I don't know. I think so. But yeah. it, have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. This is the one with the toe-ins and stuff like that. So the massive, yeah, massive like breaks. Like yeah. Yeah, this yeah, is it's crazy. Evolution of big wave riding, which is just the craziest thing ever. Now, I'm not even worried about sharks now. It's just like you're going to die. If you fall, you're going to die. Smashed. This wave is going to alive you're underwater for like three minutes they have those life jackets that inflate and bring them up and then the surf the jet ski guy has to get in yeah. and save them with before the next wave hits and then the jet ski goes flying it's like that just seems so incredibly gnarly yeah. that um it's fascinating how it came about so yeah riding riding giants is a great even if you're not a big surfer i would recommend watching that documentary if you like documentaries yeah it's when you combine being smashed against rocks and coral uh being drowned by the and, and just the sheer weight of the, the 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 these huge waves being smashed down on top of you and plus sharks and things like that although to be honest you're right sharks are not even probably in the top three things that you'd have to worry about riding these <laughs> waves so um it's yeah. crazy stuff i i have seen this a while ago but i i remember Anything where you have to have someone tow you up to speed to get, you know, to, to match the wave, that's craziness. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just wild. Like these, these guys are complete adrenaline junkies, which is fascinating. It's kind of like the, like the, uh, the wingsuit skydiving guys. Oh, yeah. Like you watch them and you're like, man, that looks cool. Like it's probably super fun to do. Yeah. But just like, you know, what are the chances if I tried to get into that, that I would just kill myself? Well, like pretty hot. They miss stuff by inches. I know. <laughs> and, and, There's a famous video, like one guy smacked into a, a bridge and they were all flying and they went through the bridge and the one guy just bam, ooh. hit right onto me. Of course, died immediately. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, and I'm sure they don't tell you how many people actually die doing that sport, but I don't know. You got to have like some real sense for adrenaline and adventure to, to get into something like that. Yeah. No, nah, not nowadays. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Uh, number four. Number four, classic, Friday Night Lights. One of my favorite football movies. Probably my, probably my favorite football movie, okay. Friday Night Lights. Yep. Yeah, I, I loved it. I thought it was great. Just the real Texas high school scene, and you know how intense and important high school football is down there. Listen, I played high school football in Ontario and we'd be lucky if there was 20 people watching a game. Uh, okay. But yep. in Texas or wherever, you know, in some of the Southern States, it's like the whole town is watching and they're all behind the team. Just an intense movie. Loved it. Yeah. Have you seen it? I have. And um, we obviously had the TV series. Uh, oh, that's well. right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I see. Didn't really get into the TV series too much, but uh, I have seen the movie. Yeah, and it really gives you an appreciation for how nuts they are about even, you know, high school junior football. Yeah, uh, 14. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. 
And you see, I, I guess through the movies and things like that, it gives you a, also an appreciation of how uh, crazy they are about the fervor around college football as well. We 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 don't have that here really, like you know the alma mater sort of thing. Of yeah, I went to that school, and I played for that school, and um, people don't really care. Yeah. Listen, high school or high school, no college, college basketball in the states is like arguably more fun to watch than the NBA. Like when March Madness, March Madness. comes on, yeah, <laughs> at the NCAA, like even I, I'll watch that yeah, because those yeah. games, are, those guys are really going for it, yeah, because they want to get into the NBA, and it's just it's fun to watch. But we don't have that in Canada either. Nobody cares. Nobody nobody televises college football and basketball unless maybe it's the final um but i could play on the university of guelph football team and nobody would care yeah yeah well i guess it's more like what it is for us here as well so yeah yeah Yeah. okay number all right we're top three yes this the all important ones so (laughs) here we they're all important but yeah number three and I think every, if you think sport movies, I think this is this is up there for most people too. Remember the Titans? Oh man, remember the Titans? Just classic football movie. Yeah. Great music, like great soundtrack. Um, shows a little bit of like that was back during like the racial segregation times too in the states, mm. which is kind of fascinating to see, especially when you watch those movies nowadays. And it, it seems like it was so long ago. It wasn't that long ago, and you kind of watch it, and you're like, wow, this is wild. Yeah. This is totally wild. Yeah. But the way that that plays out into football, and they bring a black coach in, and everyone's not too sure how that's going to go, and then it turns out he's he's an unbelievable coach. And yeah, that that's another feel-good movie. I, I Yeah, big yeah. fan. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it, I guess as much as the football is a big focus in that movie obviously the dynamic between the players and how they come together and the adversity that they face that unites them and the things they have to overcome personally makes for yeah one of the best sporting movies ever i think i think it's fantastic i agree i agree um yeah remember the titans great movie one of my fa- one of, uh, I, I like one of the actors there too because he's got the same last name as me. I think it's Damien Hurst. No, Ryan Hurst. Ryan Hurst, yeah. The um, one of the football guys. He goes on to play in Sons of Anarchy and a couple other good movies and shows too. He's a great actor, Canadian. Oh, really? Okay, very good. All right, all right. Number two is Coach Carter, another super famous. And you are right. You're a hundred percent right. It is Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, I was like, I don't, I don't know if it was, but it's almost hard to like see him now yeah. in a series. Movie. <laughs> I feel like everything he's done in the last 20 years has just been a complete joke. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he was at one point like a good serious actor. And that, I don't know, I've seen Coach Carter numerous, numerous times. He was never the biggest basketball player or fan. I do love watching it, but that movie is another coach dynamic and just, yeah, it's another great one, in my opinion. Fan favorite in this house purely because all my boys are basketballers and they love their basketball. And uh, apart from that, though, it's a good story. You don't have to be a basketballer or even like basketball to like the show. It's it's a great show. And uh, another one where the dynamic between the coach and the players and then the players uh, themselves uh, just creates such a great story. Yeah, I know. Uh- it's great. Actually, have you or your son seen um, that new that Ben Affleck one on Netflix, The Way Back? No. No, I don't think. Well, I haven't. I don't know about them, but I haven't seen it, no. It, it didn't make the top 10 for me, but um, it's a basketball-based movie too and kind of about the it, – it's more about the coach and the team than the – it's good though. I, yeah, watch okay. it. Okay, I'll they, definitely go. With the family, your sons will love it for sure if they're big basketball fans. Yeah. They, they would love it. All right, fantastic. Yeah. We'll have a look at that. And uh, yeah, great. Um, all right, I'll just take another quick break and have a drink of water and let you relax a little bit. And uh, then we'll get into uh, a quick fire round and also your number one. Ooh, <laughs> nice. That sounds great. All right. All right, so I have some uh, questions for you. Don't think too hard about them. They're just some quick-fire questions just to, to get to know you a little bit further in terms of 
you know, a little bit more of your personality. And uh, as soon as we we finish them, we'll get onto your number one. All right, let's do it. All right. So, first question is: favorite drink, favorite beverage, weight class. Okay. Yep. They've become popular here in Australia lately too. So, <laughs> um, what's something that uh, really makes you mad? That makes me mad. Yeah. Mm, people that won't listen, like arguing with people that do not listen. Mm-hmm. That makes me mad. When you're just trying to get your point across and you can tell that they're not listening to you, they're just waiting for you to stop so that they can t- continue on their way. Then I, that used to make me mad. Now I just like, I, I'm not having this conversation with you. Yeah, life's too yeah. short. And drivers, bad drivers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, universal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no kidding. Uh, favorite movie? Oh, geez. Number one. Okay, I'm going to go. Oh, this didn't make my list. Oh, I'm so bummed that I forgot about this now. This would have made the list for sure. Um, Out Cold. Comedy snowboarding movie oh. from like ah, the late 90s, early 2000s, maybe. Okay. Um, that Galifianakis' first feature film. Oh, really? Ah. It's outrageous. It's a comedy, but it's it's all snowboarding, and I'm really bummed that I forgot to put that on my list. Oh, well, you've got it in anyway, so all good. <laughs> out, or out cold. Watch out, it, people. Out cold. Um, what's the worst bad habit that you have on the show that you have to edit out every week? Oh, geez. The worst bad habit is, you know what? I'm going to call Mark out for this. He does a lot of clicks. So before he talks about, yeah, and then it just it dri- most people probably don't even notice, but it drives me nuts. And then I have to edit them all out. I have to find all the little clicks and take them out. So yeah, clicks. Mark and I sound like a similar <laughs> type of podcaster. <laughs> I do the same thing. No, no, you doing it. It just comes out of nowhere. You just yeah. okay, yeah, and it's like, wow, why did I just do that click? Yeah, I'm sure he doesn't even know he's doing it. No, he doesn't. I call him out on it all the time, and he still does it. <laughs> uh, favorite TV show of all time? Oh, geez. I watch a lot of TV. I watch way too many series. Um, I'm going to say my favorite series TV show that, I've, that, that I can think of is Animal Kingdom. You heard of it? Yes. <laughs> yes, I've heard of Animal Kingdom. Yep, definitely. Yeah. So Good. Very good. Surfing, crime. Yep. What, like, what else could you, you ask for? Very- L.A.? Earthy, so yeah. Um, what about what's your favorite TV show? Favorite TV show? Ah, uh, oh, there's been a few. Yeah, you know, like I really liked Game of Thrones. Obviously, Walking Dead. I'm a big fan of. Uh, one of my favorite TV shows, I guess, that I, I I watched for a long time was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, it was a ton of those. And the other one, which uh, I'm on my fourth run through at the moment, which is. Very unusual for me because I don't usually watch things over and over. Uh, it's hard to get me to watch a movie twice, let alone a TV Same. series. Um, yeah. But I'm a big Office fan. Oh, the US or the British? No, the US. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. My youngest brother is, I, I, yeah, I wish I could ask, but he's probably watched the whole thing like five or six times yep. start to finish. And then every once in a while, I'll go in and he'll be watching it. And then I'll sit down and then we start watching it. And I'm like, it is brilliant. Yeah. I, I love The Office. Look, <sighs> I'm a mad fan. I'm on, I'm on my fourth run through and I'm in season. I've just got into season nine. So uh, from season seven onwards, some would say parts of six, but seven onwards, I'm, it's, it doesn't hit me the same way. Uh, it's because of Steve Carell not being in it. And I think they lost their way a little bit, but it's still funny. Yeah, for sure. And I always forget, I'm not the type of guy that has the greatest like memory for that stuff. So then I'll watch an episode and I like, it's almost like I'm watching it again for the first time. I'm like, yeah, I forgot that this even happened. Like the lines and the jokes and <laughs> it's, it's also a surprise every time you watch it. Yeah, the looks. Look, I get a lot of rubbish from my family for watching it so much. So uh, <laughs> they come home and they'll put on Netflix and the first thing that comes up is The Office and they know Dad's been on watching <laughs> The Office. That's so. right. Anyway. <laughs> um, what keeps you up at night? Um, TV. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was thinking more in terms of, you know, uh, ethical dilemmas or, you know, uh, global crises, but <laughs> I guess just general TV and work. You know what? I have this really incredible ability to live in the moment. And I don't, um, I also am very, very good at turning my brain off. Like I know lots of people think about things and it keeps them up. I'm like, no, I put on some shit TV. Like I'm, I'll admit, I'll, I'll watch reality TV because it's the like, it's the dumbest thing that you can watch. And my brain just turns to mush, and I just watch it, and then I end up staying up late watching it. I'm not a worrier. I don't stress. I don't panic. I don't really get a ton of anxiety about stuff. So yeah, I'm lucky in that sense. I think I just put on some trash TV and watch okay. it, and then I end up staying up late. You don't have kids, do you? <laughs> no, I don't have kids. That that would certainly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll uh, talk to you in about 10 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, what's the best fashion advice you've ever gotten? Fashion advice? Yes. Oh, geez. I don't know. I clearly haven't listened to anybody's fashion <laughs> advice. Uh, I've, 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 my, some of my friends have been telling me to cut my hair for a long time, and uh, I've just refused to do that. I'm on pandemic uh, protest when it comes to getting a haircut. So never had long hair before, but I'm just doing my thing. But yeah, my sense of fashion is, is just, I, I don't really care what other people say, to be honest. It's I not, just wear what I wear. Not high on the priority list. So <laughs> it's high on the priority list. Sometimes it's some outrageous stuff. Like I've, I go back and forth. Like I'll have very plain clothes and then I have very outrageous clothes. Okay. Like when I go golfing, it's like, patterned and colors and everything crazy and and then it doesn't match and i'm like i don't care this i like this shirt so i'm wearing it um but yeah maybe i should listen to some people's fashion advice but <laughs> that's a funny question um please tell me you don't wear plus fours wear what plus fours you know the uh golf pants that are you know they they blow out around mid-calf oh no <laughs> No, I would love to have a pair of those though, just for a joke. But no, what do we call those here? We call them like, oh, geez. I've never heard that term, plus fours. I do know what you're talking about though. I'm pretty sure they're called plus fours. Maybe I'm getting it wrong. It's been a while since I've actually used that term. But uh, let me have a look here. Just see, make sure that I'm actually not leading you astray. Uh, plus fours. I know exactly what you mean. I just didn't know yep. if that's what they were called. That's them. They're uh, called plus fours. Yep. Oh, knickers. Yeah. We would call them knickers. Okay. I, which British people call their underwear, I think, knickers. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. So knickerbockers, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I would certainly put, you know what? I'd put them on. I, I'd wear them. I think it'd be a good joke. <laughs> well, there was. Um, but I don't know. There was a um, uh, an American golfer. I can't remember his name, but he used to wear them all the time from the nineties and early two thousands. I think it was. Uh, yeah, can't remember his name, but um, he he wore them. Stewart. Yes, exactly. Right. There you go. So you know golf better than I do. So <laughs> that's the only one. That's the only sport where like I do know most of the golfers and most of the stats because I watch pretty much every PGA event. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, look, yeah. last one. What's something about yourself that most people wouldn't know or wouldn't expect and wouldn't know to ask? Hmm. Depends. I think it would be a bit... Uh, well, I already told you that I like watching trash reality TV, so most people probably wouldn't expect that. <laughs> um, but we were on a podcast the other day too and someone asked us a similar question. What's something that you know people would be surprised to find out? Um, and I say, if, you, if you've only known us from listening to our podcasts or our music, you'd probably be quite surprised to find out that Mark and I are, are, are both uh, quite highly educated, which is, <laughs> it, it, it would definitely be a surprise. But I mean, uh, Mark's a doctor and I've got an MBA in sustainability. And um, so we've both been through seven or eight years of university. Very good. Um, yeah. Yeah, it just wouldn't, you wouldn't, you definitely wouldn't think that if you listen to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you are softly spoken and articulate guys. So uh, I think uh, that wouldn't come as a surprise to a lot of people, but they may not assume that straight away. Uh, you know, people, I guess, who are into music 
generally they've been into music from an early age and that's been their main focus. So they could assume that, I guess, with you guys as well. But uh, obviously you've made time to do a lot of other things. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Music is, uh, I, I tell this to people all the time too, because we get all sorts of you know, people reaching out to us on Instagram asking if we want to sign up for some PR agency or some, you know, pay for some services for promotion. And I'm like, you know what? Music's just a passion for us. It's a passion. It's a passion project. Yeah. We're, we're not, you know, we didn't drop out of school and try to make it big or anything. It's just like, nope, we both have careers. We both have, you know, for the most part, our, our stuff together, our shit together, um, professionally speaking. And then in our spare time, we like to make music and podcast. Yeah. Great. All right. Very good. Well, let's get back to your countdown and the number one, the favorite sporting, or, you know, I guess these weren't in any particular order, but this has come in at number one. What's your number one? But this one comes in at number one for a good reason. It is, if I had to pick one, this is my number one, is the greatest game ever played. Also the greatest golf movie ever made. I did say honorable mention to Happy Gilmore, which is a fantastic movie. Adam Sandler's hilarious. Mm -hmm. But the greatest game ever is a brilliant golf movie. And I believe, what's the guy's name? Shia LaBeouf. Okay. Yep. Doesn't am have you seen it? No, Darren? I haven't seen it. No. It's about golf, so I would steer I would <laughs> steer clear of it straight away. So um Yeah. yeah. You know what though? It's it is another one of those movies that like you don't have to be a huge golf fan to to enjoy it yeah. and appreciate it. It's kind of uh, you know, a coming of, of age story and um it's set way back. Like I think it's like in the sixties or something or the fifties. So really, really well done movie. Um just feel good. Yeah, I'm not gonna spoil it, uh, but but you should you should watch it. It's a it is a great movie. Okay. Yeah. Well, with that endorsement, I definitely have to go check it out. So I will. Yeah. Um. And you said uh, Happy Gilmore was one of your honorable mentions. Any others? Yeah. Out Cold, I missed. That's a great snowboarding movie. I mean, geez, there's a ton of ton of football movies. You mentioned The Blind Side, which is a good one too. Also a true story. Yeah. Um. Uh, Oh, gee, all, all I have to do is... Oh, and you also mentioned Slapshot, which is <laughs> Slapshot 1 and 2 are brilliant as well. The handsome Mighty boys. Ducks. Like, yeah, the Hanson Brothers. Oh, my God. They're hilarious. Miracle on uh, Ice. Miracle on Ice. Oh, my God. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Uh, geez, I'm drawing a blank. Shoot some more that I that, that I hadn't uh, thought well, of. Look, there's a, there's a heap of 30... Well, I guess they're not movies. They're docos. More, the 30... Um, uh, was it the 30 on 30 or 30 by 30? Uh, the um, ESPN oh. docos. They're really good. There's a lot of those that are really good. Um, yeah. But in terms of movies, yeah, I think we've covered a lot of the big ones. Major League, that's a funny movie. Ooh, Ooh with Charlie Sheen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Wild <laughs> Thing. That's <laughs> <Fun. laughs> a fun movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Look, I have to ask you one question. Uh, as a Canadian, I always ask my Canadian uh, guests this. Tragically hip or rush? Tragically hip. Okay. And that's what I seem to get from all. seems that rush was big outside of Canada and tragically hip is the, the fan favorite in, inside tragically Canada. Tragically hip definitely a fan favorite. Everybody loves the tragically hip. I think a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon too after he died. Mm. Um, and then they were all of a sudden much bigger tragically hip fans than they ever were, but they got, a, they got a lot of music and I'll be honest, there's a lot of it that I haven't heard of, but I know the main, like, I probably know a good 10 or 12 good tragically hip songs rush. I, I don't, I never really got into rush. I can respect, um, what is it? Neil Pert, the yeah. drummer yeah, and, and Getty Lee. Like I know who rush is and, yeah. um, and they've got a couple great, great songs that I know, but I, I definitely never like got into the rest of them what's their big what's their main song um there's tom sawyer which is pretty popular and yeah, yeah. and uh, they do the um uh, the priests like i i found them from playing guitar hero and uh, yeah <laughs> and one of our uh, reps uh, also is a an expat um englishman who loves rush he's seen them like four or five times he absolutely loves rush and he put me onto dream theater as well which is a uh, another band oh, yeah. I like. yeah rush fans are like big fans of rush yeah like they're yeah. like they have a real close and loyal following yeah it's good. i know a few people that are diehard rush fans 
And it's funny, it's like um, Rammstein, uh, a, a big everywhere else in terms of that's the German band everyone knows. But you know, in Germany, for example, they're they're not as big. Uh, it's crazy how that how that happens. Yeah, uh, it is like that. It's like that Sugar Man. Um, do you ever see that documentary, Finding Sugar Man? No. What's that about? Oh, it's hilarious. It's this guy named Sugar Man that made all this music like way back. I'm going to get my dates wrong, but like, let's say back in the seventies or something or eighties, he made a bunch of music and, um, ended up not really doing anything with it and then disappeared and was living somewhere in, in the Bahamas or something like that. And didn't realize that his music absolutely took off. I think in like Africa okay. or something, he was like a celebrity, like, but nobody knew where he was and he had no idea. And then this whole documentary is these people just being like, we have to find Sugar Man and tell him that he's basically famous. And it's, I won't even spoil anymore. It's a, okay. it's a fascinating documentary of a guy who's like essentially famous, but has no idea and never made a dollar off of any of it until later. Oh, I'll definitely have to give that a, you give me a list of things to watch now as well. So, <laughs> which is great. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> John, look, thank you very much for coming on today. Uh, I'd love to have you back on another time when we could have Mark on as well uh, and we could get all the all the Hearst goodness all in one, <laughs> one shot and maybe even bring Jake on. But, uh, but thank you very much for making time and uh, I'll give you a chance to plug uh, the plethora of content that you put out. Oh, yes. Yes, the plug. I always forget about that. Well, this, first of all, thank you for having me on. This has been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. We've had a great conversation. And I think the top 10 idea is really cool. It just adds that kind of layer of conversation in there that that you may not have gone into. So yeah, thank I really you. enjoyed it. It's been fun. Um, if you want to find us, it is very easy. You can just Google the Hearst Brothers. It is spelt Hearst, H-I-R-S-T. It's like first, but with an H. Uh, that's the right way to spell it. So if you Google the Hearst Brothers, you'll find our website where we put all sorts of great stuff on there. Um, we've got some outrageous merch and pretty much links to everything else. Instagram, we're Hearst underscore brothers underscore podcast or Hearst underscore brothers underscore music. Just Google the Hearst Brothers. YouTube us. You'll find our channel. It's um, it's good for a couple of laughs and maybe you like the music, maybe you don't. But yeah, we're we're, we're out there. That's for sure. Pretty easy to find if you Google it. Great. Thank you again for making the time. All the best to you for the coming week and uh, and onwards. I hope COVID doesn't get you down too much there in Ontario. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. And you keep putting out that uh, that fantastic content. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Yeah. And our, uh, I should mention too, our EP Groove Town is coming out February 1st. Um, if it's not after February 1st when people are listening to this. But uh, Groove Town, yeah, first four four songs um and yeah we hope people like them so again darren thank you so much this has been awesome and we'll uh we'll keep in touch yep definitely mate will you uh have a good one and thanks again all right bye 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 that's it for another week i hope you enjoyed my chat with john it came very naturally and as i mentioned in the beginning john was very invested in the discussion and passionate about his countdown he and his brothers seem like what Australians think to be the quintessential of Canadians. Outdoorsy, polite, and very easygoing. Also, who knew they were an MBA and a doctor? Very impressive. I'll leave all the links to the brothers' work, both podcast and music-related, in the show notes. And a quick note on the music, since our chat, the boys have released some new music, so I'll include that in the show notes as well. If you would like to support my show with your hard-earned cash, Then I have a Patreon and buy me a coffee page available. Otherwise, do all the usual rate, review, and subscribe stuff. It would be much appreciated. Next week is another R&R show, and it's, let's say, educational. Everyone stay safe and well, and as usual, I'll chat at you again next week.